Does this have AC? What, you would not off? No, it went on. Don't, don't tell me that you'd have the AC. It's already on. You'd have the window open and then the AC? It's on. Okay. Today we're in the car. Welcome back everyone to this week's Shop Stories. Welcome to the car. Yeah, the videographer has bailed on us. He clicked. COVID virus, apparently. Absolute excuse. Yeah, ironically, he was at a wedding at the weekend. You need to lean in here. Okay. We don't have someone following us. Okay. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we've got a conversation that we're going to be talking about, which is, I think, important for people to know. And it's, what it's one it of those higher level events that's taking place that's frameworking everything that you that's creating the framework that you have to deal in and that's why we believe everyone it's know. changing the fundamentals of the real estate market the real estate market is not the same today as it was 22 years ago in the year 2000 so and you would pick a route that has speed bumps when a coffee and a white shirt when you only kind of stage the best case scenario that's just all. trying to get that footage but the point being is things have changed and this even changed before we were through the madness that is COVID and gone are the days where you used to be able to try and get it. Yeah, find that notorious deal and it was like 25% off of market value and, and things like that. And 15. So there's never 25% off. It's well, you say that. You say that I did a listing presentation recently for a client and they bought their property. It was on the market for 1.2 back in the day and they just threw a low ball offer. They knew about it at 750,000 and they got the price. It's probably worth 825 and the guys just have over listed. That's back then it was more realistic, but back then you would find more for sale by owners. It wasn't as competitive. And so I think you've got some interesting figures for us. Uh, when it comes to our housing situation. So what we've tried to do is we know and have heard that the market's crazy, of course, not just here in Vancouver and Canada, but worldwide. Technically, we're going international today because we are uh, taking some world facts. So within the G7, mm -hmm. which we, uh, the world stage elites like to uh, talk in realms of, yeah. um, Canada has the lowest population of housing units per 1,000 people or 1,000 uh, citizens, we'll call it. Okay. So the lowest population of housing per citizens um, in the G7. And specifically, I believe it was either 2020 or 2021. We can't refine the stat. That was 424 units per thousand people okay which puts us in the lowest in the g7 okay that's declined as well right because in 2016 that was 427 or 428 so we're actually as our population grows and we move on we're actually having less housing per 1000 and we all know that even though it's not the sole and main issue as you like to lean on uh we do have an inventory issue here in Vancouver okay. uh, and obviously Canada and I'm not saying that other countries don't we can dabble in that conversation if we like uh, afterwards but um, yeah fundamentally we have the lowest housing per 1,000 citizens in the G7 okay um, do you window up outside no noise it's giving ambiance want the AC does this have AC? Well, he, he, he would not off? No, it went on. Don't, don't tell me that you'd have the AC. It's already on. You'd have the window open and the AC? Oh, it's all bougie. Anyway, continue. So what's the average then in, in the G7 per 1,000? For us to get to the average, um, what do we have here? The average is 471 per 1,000. Per 1,000. Actually, do you remember what the, the, the highest? In the G7 was which which country highest in the G7? No, I don't know. Um, okay, so the average would be 471. <laughs> Leave it to you. <laughs> no, I don't. I thought you were about, about to drop it on me. Um, 
so 471 is the average. Again, we're at 424. And for us to get to said average, we would need to build a whopping 1.8 million more homes Canada-wide. Um, so instead of building 1.8 million more homes Canada-wide and giving, well, the government wants to give incentives for everything, so we might as well give incentives to uh, home builders and developers if we actually want to address the situation. But instead of that, we have averaged 500,000 fresh new Canadians a year over the past 10 years. Okay. Simply applying more pressure, more wood, more stoking of this Canadian fire. Okay, so that's 1.8 million homes to bring us to the average of the G7, which is not even fixing the problem because if you go to places like the UK and, and various other countries that, that are in the G7 and nations, they still have a housing problem anyway, and the market has been going crazy. Well, and as we know, yes. Yeah, prices yeah. have been yeah. risen. So, and that's a current population. So that's not assuming the additional population, which we continually try and bring in. I think what they're aiming for over 400,000 a year. I think they're, by everything I've seen, obviously there's no fixed number, but it sounds like they would like to, I would safely feel I was saying, upkeep the 500,000 year average that we've seen over the past decade. So apparently we have, according to Scotiabank's chief economist, we averaged about 188,000 new home completions um, per year uh, over the last 10 years. So that is now, I think, so 10% well, so of what's needed now. Last year that went to 286,000 new home build constructions. And then the government are now saying that they, or according to the liberal agenda, they're trying to add another 400,000. So another 400,000, that's per year. Let's say they're even able to achieve that for so a 20%, 12, 12, 12, 16. So we're at four and a half years before we're even at the average level of the G7 based on the current population, not including the population, the what it's going to grow to. million more people that's going to come and Okay. So that pressure and again beat any alleviating by way of development. Wow. Well, so the, the the moral of this story is which we didn't say at the start, <laughs> which will tie to the title Marcus somehow. Change it. No, you used to be able to find a deal. That is no longer the deal. The new deal, uh you're not walking around finding 15% off. There's too many eyes on it. There's too much information being spread online. There's too many realtors. There's too many mortgage brokers. There's just so much of everything in this industry. There's so much government emphasis on everything. Rentals, everyone's eyes are on this industry. So there's no like, oh my God, I found this place that was on the market undervalued and it's been sitting there and they took an amazing price. That's gone, which relates back to your client's apparent deal that they found or their parents found many moons ago. The new deal that people should be looking for. I'll okay. let you elaborate. The new deal is looking at real estate long term because I pose this question across to our viewers. When the pandemic hit and housing started to really pick up, when you know when multiple offers were really starting to become the new norm. And let's say a detached house on the east side was listed for 1.5 and it sold for maybe 1.55, 1.6. If you went into that scenario at the start of COVID when things were starting to get busy and you said, I, have, I had to buy this house subject free 5% over ask, so many people would have turned around and been like, what, that's ridiculous, that's crazy, subject free over ask for like barely a plot of land, you're, you're mad. But what did that turn into? It turned into, I had to buy this subject free. I was competing with 20 other offers and we had to go 10 to 15 percent of the grass. And then when you look at that over the long period, who got the better deal? Obviously the one who went 5 percent over ask. So my point is not you need to just go in at 5 percent over ask and that's your deal. It's to look at it in the long term. If you buy today and you sell in 10 years time, 
are you really going to be upset because you only got 80% in equity over that 10 year period versus 87.5% because you didn't wait another year, for example, if you're okay with waiting for another year and if you're okay with trying to like, time the market, as people of course always try and do, which is almost not impossible. Let's see you uh, right there. Okay. That first floor. Some Vancouver Diamonds World Headquarters right there. Okay, the nice. First visit yesterday, nice spot. Anyway, sorry. Wonderful. Um, Side note. But looking at it from more of a Vancouver standpoint, so this, this will be interesting for you. Oh, will it? Yes, it will be interesting for you, Jay. For me. So, from 2002 to 2012, how many homes do you think sold on average a year? 30,000, 32,000. It's 33,500, basically. And then between 2013 to now, how many homes do you think sold on average? No, it's about 33,000. So it's about the same amount of homes that are selling. But which, so over the last two decades, we've averaged essentially the same. Yeah, I mean the average, but the average it's we're not far off the average either side within under 2000 sales yeah. per year. And I mean we average. have to take the average because obviously those periods of time include high peak yeah, yeah. points, they include low times as well. So our population has grown substantially. But the interesting thing is is 10 years ago, you look at what the market was doing, what were interest rates in 2008, for example. Six. Six percent. And then back, I feel like this is a, a fable talking about this, like one of those old wives tales that no one believes, but you could buy homes with zero down. Oh yeah, did that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. those were the days. No, you didn't. I didn't, <laughs> clients did. <laughs> so, the home price index from that time has gone from 621,000 to a million before COVID, after COVID, 1.2 million on average. So you've got an extremely increased supply in terms of demand, because obviously our population has increased as we've discussed. You've got practically a double home price index. Yeah. So back then it was far easier because you could put zero down. The interest rates kind of negate themselves out because now you have the stress test of plus 2%, so you're having to qualify around that similar sort of time. Plus you're only qualifying up to property pricing that was again half of what they were yeah, today. Exactly, so it was far easier to get into the market then. So you, if anything, you would assume that as things get more difficult, home prices would slow down. It would become more difficult for people to get in. And side note, right now with the prices slight slightly depending where you are anywhere between five and let's say late teens off of peak pricing mm -hmm. and absolute we'll say at least decade peak interest rates it's mm -hmm. arguably the hardest time to buy right now yeah uh analytically speaking yeah. from all that from all those both of those sides so but yet homes are still selling we're still selling just as many and as anyone who's been in the real estate market, whether you're an agent, a mortgage broker, a buyer or seller, you know the climate of the market. And yes, COVID made things crazy. And for the last like couple of years, it was extremely bullish in real estate. But then we've had other extremely busy times in real estate that were not just COVID related. And we've had low times as well. And it's always come down to the same thing, supply. Our biggest issue is supply. I think the only reason that we're actually at th around 33,000 homes sold is because of supply. I think if we had a lot more supply on the market, but those numbers would be higher. Because that's what's actually holding us back or holding buyers back from being able to purchase because there's not enough. And then jumping back to what we were talking about on the G7 side of things, I don't know how we're actually gonna get out of this. And when I say I don't know, we're not gonna get out of this because who's gonna build these homes? Again, that's why I think if, if, which they're not, because actions speak louder than words, as my wife will tell you, um, if the government actually wanted to fix this problem, they would start incentivizing the building of 
Mm -hmm. um, they would not start trying to cripple from the buying end. They would start trying to invent, in, incentivize the uh, the development side, the supply and side, the supply side. Yeah, which I think is just kind of common sense. Another caveat to that, that I just want to say, when you hear a lot of, as we've seen and we talked about last week, we've got activity, sales activity. Um, right now sinking with supply which you do not typically see um, and a lot of sellers pulling their properties off the market saying I'm gonna wait until uh, prices go back up um, it took in, in basically in 2000 whatever we said seven or eight rates were six percent it took to uh, what was that? 14 years mm -hmm. and a pandemic of said proportions to get down to the bottom, whatever you could get, uh, fixed rate, I don't remember, two percent or two and a quarter, and variables I think were as low as like one and a quarter. Um, so 14 years in a pandemic of continuously declining rates um, and so on and so forth. Rates have jumped from basically April uh, to now almost, 4% itself mm -hmm. um, so for people to say oh, I'm just gonna wait for the pricing to come back that peak pandemic pricing that we all saw was a collaboration of 14 years and a pandemic and the craziness with half a million people a year on average for the last decade coming in all of these very very perfect storm uh, equations coming together to get those peak prices which people think I'm just going to wait a year until it's back at the top and then I'm going to sell. Mm -hmm. But do you see, uh, okay, like a west side, just to pick it, an easy thing, a, a, a standard lot on the west side, let's say at two, two million, two and a quarter, um, at peak market, absolute trough interest rates, selling for the same price when rates are five and a quarter percent? Absolutely not. And on top of that, the development side now that the experience is going to be is that they're going to buy these lots. And I think that is a substantially diminished market now, obviously. They got to buy the lots with these increased rates. And then construction loans are also obviously applicable to these crazy rates. So the cost of everything is just through the roof. So waiting for peak pricing again, I think we got to peak pricing due to a variety of perfect storms coming together, which we're just not going to see. So I think it's very, very subjective to wait from this point when we're still kind of relatively close to peak to sell um, for those perfect numbers to come back because I just don't see it happening in, in the anywhere near short term. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to our point as well as there's, there's going to be a limit. So those who are expecting that, okay, I want 25% I want off of the asking price. Well, look at the supply out there. So as soon as it does go to a deal per se, i.e. let's say 10% off of peak times or 15% off of peak times, people are still buying at those prices. No one sat there waiting for it to come 25% because there just isn't the supply to do so. You don't know that you can get the home that you want if you let this one pass up. So again, it's all about relativity. I mean, I think to summarize it up, what we're trying to say here is given the demand versus the supply, because the population is still gonna keep on growing. Canada cannot, is not breeding enough organically in order to grow. Breeding, good oh, word. To sustain our needs. And there's a heavy impact in, or a heavy push for immigration. So that's going to continue increasing so it's not exactly like it's going to be easier i can wait three or four or five years and the housing supply is going to be fixed and it's going to be a lot more comfortable and so on and so forth that's not how it's going to work and because of that lack of supply gone are the days where you could look for oh, i'm going to get 25 percent off of market value oh, i'm right. looking for, i'm looking for some i'm looking for someone who needs to sell and because they need to sell it, the market doesn't work like that anymore, I'm afraid. It's become too competitive. Yeah, this is generally speaking too many eyes on the market, for sure. Um, I think that's it. That's so that's I think that's that. kind of the upper level point of view on what's going on on the ground. And 
your two cents and comments on that would be much appreciated. And thank you for your attention, and we'll see you next time. And guys, if you like, or sorry, if you like these videos or get anything from them, click like, click subscribe. We appreciate you, and we will see you next week. Thank you.